Hello from fans, it's the Movie Guru, and episode four from is out, titled There and Back Again, and that is exactly what we see here. Tabitha returns in the ambulance, and Jim gets another phone call from the boy in white pretending to be Thomas. Christy is hurt, but still alive, and it looks like Nikki and Randall are possibly on their last nights of From. Before my review, please make sure you like and follow my page. It truly helps the channel and allows me to continue making videos like this. Of course, I appreciate all the support and all the positive support from everybody who likes my content. Now let's get into the episode. Episode four is titled There and Back Again and Boyd is forced to make a tough decision when newcomers arrive in the town at nightfall. Victor unearths memories from the past in hopes of finding answers and that's exactly what we see tabitha is back and the first clip is of the ambulance in front of the down tree which pretty much picks up where episode three ends now at first we only see the ambulance but then later we see tabitha come from behind the ambulance and make her appearance on the episode now if you guys remember last time they were in the car and they were going to see the second bottle tree in the second town. Tabitha, who had a headache, opens up the glove compartment and finds crackers. But behind the crackers, she finds the bracelet. Now, once she sees the bracelet, she totally loses it. Her grasp on reality is gone and she feels like she's not in control of the situation. And I'm sure she also feels like this is not the real world. So she loses it and she asks the question, what happens if I get out the car? Will I end up back in Frontville? She opens the door and I believe that was the trigger to pull her out of that place and then also bring her back to Frontville. Now, to me, the bracelet means from what I said last episode or my review was that it's called a MacGuffin or a port key and something to push that character's dialogue or storyline forward, sort of bringing them back to their reset point. But it also means that she is in an alternate reality. Now, there were some questions about the ambulance and some people on Facebook thought that this might be the ambulance that is outside the clinic, but it's two different ambulances. You can tell by the number, which is 1069, this was the same ambulance that said Knox County and was seen in front of the hospital. Now, of course, as they approach closer to the tree, the crows come out and start this murder, but they ended up getting back in the ambulance and going the other direction. Now, of course, it goes from day to nightfall. Some other people were saying that they believe that the ambulance driver was, in fact, the Puritan that Jade was seen in a vision. But you can clearly see that according to IMDb, and also when you compare the pictures side by side, they are two different people. Now, in the first clips outside the ambulance, we don't see Henry, but if you remember, that car accident was pretty bad, especially for that year make and model of that car. I'm sure there was no front side airbags, no side collision airbags, and he got T-boned in the driver's side. So, of course, he would have been banged up. A Facebook group member found that there's a connection between what is listed on his head brace that is a connection to someone who is supposedly a doctor who is a master of disguise known for body transference and often through demonic possession and sometimes utilizing object technology such as televisions or other machines to build a society of crime. Now, I don't know what that means exactly or how accurate it is, but it's someone basically saying that they confirm that Victor's dad is possibly a plant. So I'm not sure about this, but I still thought I might report on it because I do think there is something weird about the convenience of Tabitha finding his dad. And she even said in the last episode, like, what are the chances of being waking up in that hospital in that town and being led directly to the house? So this is how we know that she was put there to find all this and possibly to bring him back or another quest to help them solve the riddle of helping the children or freeing the children. So as the ambulance is driving around, a scene cuts to Boyd coming to the bus and wants to switch with Randall to watch the creatures at night. And he tells Randall to go to the police station. And we get a catch up of 
Frum's own version of To Catch a Predator, where a boy is looking to turn the tables and get revenge for what's been going on with them. Now, if you remember, he approached Ellis. Now, he did ask Ellis for his help, but it seems like Ellis wasn't able to help out because he had stuff going on with his wife, Fatima. We do have some clips here where Randall is in the mix and something's not right with him. He's still seeing the cicadas and then he's also still being plagued by them attacking him. Now, this is possibly foreshadowing to what happens later. Just follow with me. Then Boyd comes on a bus. The cicadas disappear. He's standing there looking like a number one crazy person on the bus. Now, as they're waiting for whatever to come out, the ambulance comes into town and this is when chaos breaks out. Tabitha starts yelling, telling them not to get out. They get out anyway. And then we see Acosta, the new member, uh, who runs outside thinking she's, you know, RoboCop and ends up running and abandoning Tabitha while she's tied to the post. Now, Acosta running through the, the yards, trying to get away. All the creatures are coming out from every direction, looking like Call of Duty, starts firing and misses and, of course, hits one of the Kanye House members. Now, this from the it was in the original trailer, and I thought it was sort of a Kanye House versus Kanye House type of war going on. We find out it was Acosta who pretty much shot through the window, hitting the Kanye House resident. They actually let her into the house because she's got the cop uniform, and everybody's panicking. She can't believe it. She's trying to figure out who they were. She can't get a grasp on reality, and then she sees the damage that she did. It clips back to Randall, who is trying to help Tabitha, runs back to the uh, the bus to grab some tools, and we see him grab a talisman, and he tries to use the talisman like it's garlic or some type of device to keep the creatures away, but it does not work. And they even say, sorry, sweetie, it doesn't work like that. Now, this is the part where I thought that Randall was going to grab a Molotov, and he might have tried to throw it, but for some reason it backfired, so... Uh, you know, I'm the first to admit that uh, I was wrong on this theory uh, because what it was is he was on the ground. It looked like he might be patting himself down from fire, but he was trying to swat the cicadas. Boy gets hit with an ultimatum. He's looking for the keys to get the van out of there to save Tabitha and Jim, who've got plenty of main character energy. And he ends up taking the proposition from the creature, which is take the keys, but they were going to keep Randall. And he ends up leaving Randall. I mean, I, it's a tough decision. I feel like he had to do it. Randall wasn't high on the like likability list either. So I think that he had, he's always faced with what they call the trolley problem, where it's, you know, lose one to save three. And that's pretty much what he did. And so I don't know. What do you guys think? Was he right? Was he wrong? Was there any other way to do it? I don't think so. We, we've come to find out that the creatures are master man planners, master manipulators, and there was nothing he could do about that situation. So let's we have to see if it comes back to bite him. Now, I want to stay with this current storyline and pick up on Randall later. The story goes on, but we see Randall pop back up and they actually throw him on the hood of the ambulance. And we pretty much think he's been killed because this is his second time that he'll have been captured by the creatures. The first was in season two when he was one of the three that was possessed. But at the last minute, we see him take a huge breath. It looks like his face is cut open and he's in bad shape. But it looks like he will survive. So we'll have to see what happens to him on the next episode. So going back inside the colony house, we see the aftermath of what the cop Acosta did. Everyone's confused. Everyone's in shock. And then Boyd sees the police officer. He is mad as hell. He can't believe that someone bearing the flag would shoot somebody who didn't deserve it. Donna has his full breakdown and we kind of see here where I'm starting to notice how much the colony members and the townspeople are drinking. We kind of see it in a couple of different shots and we see it being almost a go to. And I know it's stressful, but we see uh, Fatima drinking. We see boy drinking. We see Jay drinking. A lot of them take drinks right before they have a big vision or something happens that may or may not be what they're actually seeing. So I'm starting to take notice. So let me know what you guys think if, if there is something that could possibly be in the water. So the next scene kind of picks up where they left off in three, where we see Tilly use the tarot cards to ask Fatima what she wants from her 
child or what she wants to know. Now, this is a big deal for me because I was the first one to highlight the original tarot theory on my page. If you guys want to watch that video from over a year ago, it's on my live stream page. I also reposted on my Facebook group page. Now, I kind of feel like now someone pointed it out in the comments that the directors apparently at this point have seen the tarot video that we did a year ago and are kind of debunking it because we get this scene where Bakta is sort of explaining why this is weird and why this is unnatural. And she approaches Tilly and says, why would you do tarot here? Isn't there enough go stuff going on? And I think she's absolutely right. But I think this is a message from the directors kind of saying like, hey, tarot has nothing to do with this. Now, the next scenes we get involve one of our favorite characters right now, which is Fatima. She's got a lot going on with her from not feeling well from her new diet to her just trying to figure out what's going on with her body in this pregnancy stage. She's meeting with Mari, who's just giving her a look over, and she's telling her that she seems to be making progress and looking better. Now, this is a topic I've been covering a lot because we knew that Tabitha, we knew that Fatima wasn't eating, and my theory was that she was turning into one of the creatures or what I believe was a Wendigo. Now, if you guys are not familiar with that, you can go watch my video. It is on my page. You can can go into all the details that I went into about how, why, and what it, this exactly is. There is a lot of movies that cover this type of creature, and they go through the same thing that Fatima's kind of going through. A Wendigo is a cannibalistic monster from North America, and a person can become a Wendigo through either possession or cannibalism. And that's what I think both is going on with Fatima. And this could be an answer of what the creatures actually are and how they've come to be who they are. I mean, we've known that something unnatural, we kind of thought they were vampires at first. Some people thought they were fae, especially with the movie The Watchers, who is pretty much the movie version of From. Um, and so we still don't know, but we're still trying to figure out what exactly it may be. Now, this just gets really, really creepy, and it kind of confirms what I was thinking. Usually in the other movies with Wendigos, they start eating rotted food, and then they go on to eating dead people or killing people, and that's exactly what we see. Now, this, I don't know if you want to call that karma or if you want to call it, uh, you know, something full, full term, but, uh, you know, Fatima pretty much has had enough of the girl Nikki and kind of goes and gets her revenge and we finally find out what was eating Nikki. So in the clip we see Fatima you know start to examine Nikki and then she starts to pretty much get her fill of her and it starts with just like a couple licks of the finger but we don't know the extent but i'm sure that they're going to find out that some somebody ate her and they i guess they might think it's the creatures but we don't know we'll have to see now i think that this because she's doing something different i think it separates her that we can confirm that she is not the kimono woman i believe the kimono woman has something to do with other myths, I don't know exactly how they tie in, but the one I think is La Llorona, which has something to do with kids and losing kids and then stealing kids. But I do ultimately think that it's going to come down to her having the baby and the baby being some sort of creature or some sort of basket case. And a decision will have to be made by Ellis to either save Fatima or save the baby. So in the next clip, we see that Christy is injured bad. But they didn't get a chance to make it back to town. So Kenny, Christy, and Jay spend the night in the Lost Village. Now, I don't think anything important came from this scene except that, of course, Jay takes another drink and starts to tell a story. Now, Jay tells that he has seen some visions of a person when Christy asks about the rod in his eye. And then he starts to talk a little bit more about the skull full of blood. And Christy asks how long it's been going on. And Jay responds that it's been going on since he got there. Now, he does talk about the symbol and explains how Kenny's mom, Tian Chen, was the one that helped him to find it. And he didn't have any idea how she knew it was there. Now, mid-conversation, they start to hear like, rustling outside of the cabin and they all get on alert the fact that it's more than one person we can confirm that it's actually happened now and not just a figment of jay's imagination or something that could have been from the drink now it's we know that two out of the three people had a drink as far as 
Jade and Christy, but I didn't see Kenny take a drink. So the fact that Kenny saw it or heard it as well might not necessarily be related to what they were drinking if it is something that more than water. So we don't know. So what do you guys think? Is there something outside the cabin? Is this something they're going to look into later? What do you think? So then it comes to our favorite, I don't know what's going on with character Elgin. I'm happy he's got a storyline and his storyline involves the kimono woman. Now we've been seeing there kind of get closer and closer to him as the episodes have been going on to the point where she even laid hands on him. Now I don't know if he's possessed, but I do believe that he came in with this type of possession. Now he's sitting down with Tilly and I do want to point out that a couple things. First, Tilly says that, wow, she wonders if the crow was an omen. And I'm sure that the answer to that question was, duh, 100%. Now, also, I want to point out that both Elgin and Tilly are drinking. Uh, it appears to be the tap water that they're drinking. And all of a sudden, Elgin starts to see a, a vision. Now, he was awake. We don't know if he's a narcoleptic or something or if he just slipped to some sort of dream state. But he gets up. He follows the kimono woman. And then we finally hear the kimono woman say something. Uh, but it doesn't sound like Fatima's voice. And like I said, I do not believe she is Fatima, but an entirely different character that ties in somehow. And the creature says, help me. And just as he bumps into another Colony House member, he snaps out of the daze or the glamour or whatever you want to call it. And then that's the last we see that for the episode. So I'm thinking that as each episode goes on, we're going to find out more about what this kimono woman wants. Right now, she just wants Elgin to help her. So how... Can he help her is the question. Now, according to a theorist on Reddit by the name of Dangerous Bear, he believes that the woman in Elgin's dream, it is possibly a Jorogumo or Tushagumo. Now, I may not have pronounced those right correctly, but bear with me. And he says both are types of giant spider monsters that shape shift into humans and use deception to lure humans into their traps. Now, the Jorogomo specifically is associated with waterfalls and bodies of water. Similar spider shape shifters exist in Native American folklore. Now, this person goes on to say that Elgin's premonitions of a lake and dreams of being drowned by a kimono lady. In the same episode, they introduced the Brundles. Ethan's mentions the Lake of Tears. We've also seen spiders in Victor and Ethan's drawings. Boyd and Sarah have a run in with the giant spider webs in the forest. And then in the first episode of season three, Jade builds a web with strings and is underneath it when he says, I can't figure out what they're trying to tell me. Now, the symbol Jade and previously Christopher keeps drawing looks similar to the Japanese symbol for water. Now, the symbol of the talisman also resembles ancient depictions of spiders. Now, look, there is some connections and also with the themes of the show, especially the intro theme song and fate, uh, which spiders are associated with being the weavers of fate and everything is connected. So this is just another theory from another perspective. But shout out to the Reddit page and all the theorists out there that are keeping this show a top tier. So what do you guys think? Are you buying into that theory or no? So the next important scene is we get this quick but extremely meaningful conversation between Tabitha and Jim, which I think is the most meaningful conversation on the episode and between these two. Now, Jim asks if she is sure that Henry is actually Victor's father. Now, that is actually a very logical question. You know, people are definitely seeing things that aren't real all the time. So this also could not be true. But, you know, Tabitha says that Miranda saw this place, meaning Frumville, before she even got here, which is a very powerful statement because now that door is open and true. It has to be true for other characters as well, including Jim, Tabitha, Elgin, Boyd, and maybe even Donna. Now, Tabitha says she thinks that that was the reason why she was sent there. Now, let me say that again, that she was sent there. Now, she says the boy in white in the tower wanted her to see something or do something. So now that it's officially confirmed that she was sent there to that place. And if he can send her and bring her back, then that we have to conclude it was not real. What do you guys think now? Last, but of course not least, let's get into the most revealing part of the episode as far as what was Victor digging up. We get a collaboration scene with two of the scariest people on the show, Victor and Sarah. 
and we find out that Victor wants to build a fort and tell a story. Now, he told us this in episode three, but now in episode four, he says that all the details and explains what pretty much he saw and leading up to this moment that might help him get some answers. Now, he said that his mother Miranda tried to save everyone, but she died and he can't remember how or why. He said that too many things were changing and they had to go to the basement because basements are for secrets. Victor says that the night everyone died, he stayed in the root cellar. His sister didn't listen, who was Eloise, but he did. Now he explained that the boy in white was his only friend and that he couldn't bury them all and that the boy in white told him to gather the things that were precious to him and bury the things that were important to them. Now, Sarah didn't go into details, but she did ask and say that did he know the boy in white? Kind of explaining that she did too, but she didn't say it. Now, Victor agrees that he did and tells him that it was only friend, especially after everybody died. And that in the next clip, he starts looking through the suitcase and the belongings and remembers that he heard Jasper speaking to Christopher. So then Victor went and told his mother and then she went to go set the children free. So now Victor blames himself for his mother's death very tragic man i think it's so great anytime we hear victor really get into his memory bag and we this time we found out a little bit more information about christopher we still don't know what happened to him now if you guys want a more in-depth breakdown on who christopher is and what he's about you can check out the video on my page where i go into detail about christopher and when he first appeared now i do want to point out that there's a lot of theories about victor and tabitha and i do believe that since eloise his sister was introduced in season two that there's a high probability that We've already seen her or that she will appear on the show. Now, there has been some rumors and theories that, of course, because of the connection that we've pretty much seen since the first episode that Victor and Tabitha are related. Now, a lot of people on Facebook don't like this, but hey, it's up to the writers. And of course, we won't know until we know. So what do you guys think about this whole scene with Victor, Sarah, building a fort and finding information about Christopher? And also, what do you guys think about Victor and Tabitha? Are they related or is that crazy? Let me know in the comments. Now, we do get some scenes with Ethan at the beginning. Now, I moved this to the end just for my point. I wanted to put it after I talked about Victor because we see some pictures. And the first one looks like the Matthews family. And I told you guys before that I believe that Jim is the one that Victor's been drawn in all black. Then we get a looks like a scene of what Victor was talking about with Eloise and Victor in a fort in the basement. Uh, and then we get a phone call. Now, on the phone call, of course... Ethan picks up and the person on the other end says it's Thomas. Now we know that's highly unlikable because Thomas died falling off a changing table as an infant. And so we know that it's possibly the boy in white. Now he's for some reason helping Ethan and to give him heads up that his mom's coming back to town. Now Ethan keeps asking who is this? Just as we see Jim, the father of the year, come into the room, snatch the phone up and we get a very exclusive clip where the boy in white says they are not your kids anymore. Now, this what does that mean? How are they not his kids? He's literally there with them right now. But I do believe that this all leads into Jim being a villain and could possibly be why they're in Fromville. So, but we, of course, we don't know until we know. So, at episode four, we're pretty much at the point where all our theories are coming to an end. I did know that. Tian Chen was going to pass. I, I did say I said that episode six, we get kills uh, right now we're on episode four. And I believe that the new police officer, Acosta, would pass. And I did believe that I thought that Randall would die as well, uh, but they did not. And so we do see that one of my theories came right, that Mary is alive and well. Bakta is alive and well. Now, they were necessarily not seen in the original trailer that came out preseason i did believe that there was going to be some sort of back and forth war with the colony house but we see that's not the case it was acosta all along and then i did believe that the season finale was going to be christy get her leg caught and we not know what happened as it started to get dark but that is not what happened so now i have no clue what's going to happen after episode four who lives and who dies but I did go and watch one of the behind the scenes clips and uh, I believe it was either Jack Bender or John Griffin where they said multiple characters would die. And so we've got Tian Chen, we've got some other people, but we haven't seen any other main cast pass. So what's your predictions? Who else do you think is on the chopping block? Who do you think will make it? Who do you think won't? 
Of course, I love to talk to you guys about this. It's a good time to be a From fan. I hope you guys are enjoying all these theory videos. I want to thank you guys for the positive support that I get. And I want you guys to know, please like and subscribe so I can continue to do more videos. And if you're looking to challenge your From knowledge, please join me on From Trivia. I do it Sundays after the premiere at 8 p.m. on the MGM app on my YouTube channel. So look, that's all I got for you guys this week. As always, let's discuss in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.